All right, well, thanks for coming out. I believe this is the time for what on the schedule was the Honer Affiliated Harmonica Customizer uh, Panel Discussion. <clears throat> is that right? Yeah. Good. Um, so I'm Joe Felisco. I guess they put me at the, the head of the whole program. Uh, I was given this position uh, six, seven years ago, maybe eight years ago. I'm not good on the dates and the time, unfortunately. Um, I guess I'll give you a little bit of history and then see if uh, Richard would like to add anything and then we can get into some more of the details uh, in I'll introduce two of the my my colleagues that are part of the program also um, I have been <clears throat> experimenting doing work on harmonicas <clears throat> almost as almost as long as I've been playing them some about 30 years uh, I guess for me personally it's always been part of my nature part of my curiosity to understand the way things work and see if it was possible to make any kind of modifications tuning uh, I, I just fits my personality I like some the car ain't <clears throat> running quite right I'd like to think that I would have the ability to make some basic adjustments and stuff. And <clears throat> I came to my first spa event, which was in uh, outside of Detroit, Michigan in 1990. And there I seen uh, Dick Gardner, who was the first person I actually witnessed doing with confidence taking harmonicas apart and doing tuning and stuff and w witnessing him do that was quite a revelation. I guess I feel like it gave me permission to <clears throat> do the same. If, if I could see him take the thing apart and make some basic tunings and adjustments then I felt like that was something that I could do. I also had a connection from that same time period in Chicago with the Windy City Harmonica Club of which Al Fiore was a member and that's where I first met B Bud Boblink and Buzz Krantz and Wally Peterman was an on and off member of the club and he also was doing harmonica work and repairs, modifications. So I had, <clears throat> I had some pretty good role models. Um, at the same time, I was experimenting, making my own harmonica cover plates and making my own harmonica combs. Uh, I'm trained as a machinist metal worker and I think a year later, I went to what was a World Harmonica Festival held in uh, outside of Detroit, Michigan, and that's where I first met Steve Baker. And <clears throat> I didn't get a very welcoming vibe from any of the people that worked for Honer at the time. I, I guess, to put it bluntly, it the 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 attitude was a, a bit of how dare you think <clears throat> that you can make a perfect instrument any better <clears throat> and i never wanted to make trouble so i just kind of like kept myself a little bit in the shadows <laughs> uh, i was determined to do my thing but it my relationship with Honer in general, it took quite a few years to develop to what it is now. 
I guess I also want to say, which I think is really important, that they were doing stuff at the factory in the mid-1990s, which had a very big effect on what I do and who I am now. Uh, they essentially attempted to automate the assembly process of diatonic harmonicas, uh, of which, from that time period, the big river harp was like the, the product. That was the, the basic harmonica that's still available today, which was an attempt to mechanize, automate the assembly of this harmonica. And unfortunately, when they did that, they also messed with the, I guess the, word, the right word would be the specs. They messed with the specs on the marine bands that were coming off the line and the golden melodies um, and the special 20s and the brand new harmonicas from the mid 1990s of those models were the worst harmonicas that you could ever imagine and that was really the beginning of me diving into working on harmonicas and trying to actually turn it into a business. I had countless professional players approaching me <clears throat> with a panicked attitude saying, is there anything you have, is there anything you can do because the new harmonicas are just terrible, they're just terrible. The most windy, breathy, unresponsive instruments that you can imagine. And my first attempt was to <clears throat> locate new harmonicas that were of the older generation. They were a lot more playable. And then ultimately when that <clears throat> proved to be harder and harder to make happen, then <clears throat> I guess I figured out how to rebuild the reed plates so that the responsiveness of those reeds was greatly improved. <clears throat> um, Rick, Ep Rick Epping, who was working at Honer at the time, had some suggestions. Uh, according to him, the, in the accordion manufacturing, they could actually draw in and tighten the actual slot that the reed vibrated in. Uh, and I spoke to him about that over the phone. But a couple years later when I was uh, spending time with him, I think it was at one of the harmonica events in Germany, uh, it, it was pretty clear to me that <clears throat> it was not really anything that he had done, experimented with. It was something he sort of knew could be done but had not actually done any of that kind of work himself. And it was really kind of about that this same time period <clears throat> that I met Richard Slay. And uh, it was a very stressful time period for me. I, I, I just had so much potential business being able to make harmonicas that didn't play worth a damn playable. It was also this time period that, <clears throat> from my perspective, that I realized that what the harmonica playing world wanted, what the diatonic harmonica player playing world really wanted was a marine band harmonica that the comb wouldn't swell and it would be in tune, be responsive, and never break. Manufacturers, <clears throat> they did it because they were either pissed off at Honer, they couldn't deal with the inconsistencies of the Marine Band, but they, the, the discussion always really, this is my perspective, this discussion always, yeah, I play this, but <clears throat> nothing sounds as good as the old Marine Band. It was really this time period, it was like clearly 
the Marine Band was it. It was it it was this it was this harmonica that people loved, and the greatest harmonica recordings uh, were almost all certainly done on the Honer Marine Band harmonica. Uh, but it was something that had remained unchanged <laughs> since it came out on the market in the late 1800s. So this was a really big focus <clears throat> for me. Uh, continuing to go to Germany, I developed a better relationship with Steve Baker. I got to know Michael Timler, who had a business uh, called Harp Online, uh, and he really was instrumental in getting the Honer Harmonica Company to start taking the parts business a lot more seriously and selling reeds and selling reed plates and uh, everything. Uh, Michael Timler is a very, very big part of this thing. Uh, uh, Steve Baker also, he, like me, I feel like just wanted have to have access to good, consistent, well-playing harmonicas. He's been a consultant for Ho the Honer Company since I think the late 1980s and has always sort of had this, been this proverbial knocking at the door guy, kind of telling him you should change this, work on this. His, his part in this is not to be underestimated. And it was beginning, the beginnings in the late 1990s is when I started to feel like the doors were opening and I was starting to feel a little bit warmth from the definitely from the Honer company in Germany and the beginnings of some warmth from what then was Honer USA in the United States so I was beginning to have some access to parts and beginning to feel like I was uh, acknowledged as being someone who was knowledgeable and a little bit skillful. Um, and that just continued to be quite progressive. Uh, in the, I think it was about 2005, I could be wrong about the date. That's when Honer introduced the <clears throat> uh, Marine Band Deluxe, which was just essentially the stuff that uh, Richard and I were doing, you know, you know, ten and more years before. And then they introduced the crossover, which is I, I always describe it as the harmonica that you know should have been available in the 1950s when. Uh, the Chicago Blues was popular and the Delmore Brothers were still popular. Um, it, it was just it was a very smart, user-friendly harmonica that you could take apart, do basic work on it. It was stable. It was consistent. It made me happy because I could actually tell students and people that wanted to play, yes, you can actually purchase a decent playing harmonica. Um, was I'm, I was very happy that that took place. Michael Timler started working for the Honer Company at that time and completely re was instrumental. I, I believe he was the product manager for a time in Germany and he was really instrumental on taking the availability of parts, bringing it to yet even a greater level and it was really with his uh, encouragement that they wanted to make an official we love you guys kind of uh, pact with me and other folks that were willing to take the art of working on harmonicas uh, as a profession and as a high level and um, so I had to make agreements and we had to draw up contracts and make a determination of what is a custom harmonica, what is a semi-custom harmonica, and it was you know shortly after that that the first person who became 
accredited as being part of the Affiliator Customizer Program was the, uh, I believe, the Leipzig, Germany uh, player and craftsman uh, Thomas Hanke. And <clears throat> wow, it was great because now I, I even had more easy access to parts, which just made the job of doing repairs and getting things even better. I, I, I was, I, it, it really went from this place of feeling like I didn't, there was no support, no acknowledgement, no cooperation from the company at all to you know, 15 years later, really feeling like, wow, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm respected, like I'm, I have value in, the, in this industry and such. My thing for many years has been to understand, to the best of my ability, the role of the harmonica in American music. So that would include how the harmonica is used in blues, uh, old time music, Cajun music, folk music, country music, rock music, uh, jazz music. Um, I f was very instrumental in the growth and the progress of the diatonic harmonica being used as a fully chromatic instrument by players like Howard Levy. There was a, a time period which when I think about it now I, I, I must have been mentally seriously impaired for a while that uh, Richard and I were actually selling harmonicas to people with a no charge overblow <laughs> option setup, which meant we took a lot more time to make that happen, didn't charge any more money. What the hell were we thinking? <laughs> Lord have mercy. But I think, uh, I think that that to me, I, I would encourage you to take that as a evidence, uh, irrefutable evidence of what our commitment was to making great playing harmonicas available to as many people as possible. And I was, uh, we were extremely supportive of what the new directions were that the harmonica was used in. Um, I think that that is pretty well documented too. My real personal passion is how the um, harmonica is used in all the folk music genres, especially Chicago blues. So I have really worked very closely for countless years with players like uh, Kim Wilson and Jerry Portnoy and Rick Estrin and Gary Primich when he was alive, um, John Hammond really trying to understand how the harmonica is used in that genre of music because I, cause I, I think it's fairly safe to say that the blues genre of music has embraced the harmonica as a legitimate instrument more than any other genre of music. And it's definitely the marine band harmonica was at the, the pinnacle of that. Um, so I've been all about, personally, my mission is all about harmonica excellence, trying to understand. Uh, when I started playing and I started doing work, just people didn't know. People couldn't tell you, like, what was the difference between rock blues and Chicago blues? What, what's the difference between uh, Sonny Terry and Little Walter? I, I just, there was not a lot of information available. Um, which is different than now. Now there's a lot of tons of information of, available. Unfortunately, half of it's wrong information. <laughs> um, so I'm going to get back to the affiliated customizer program. I, 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 I can't tell my story. I can't talk about this with giving you some of my history because I feel like it's much too connected. If you're not going to take what my path and has been what my history has been, then you're, you're not going to really appreciate the current state of things. So I'm sorry I'm blabbering on about it, but I do feel uh, it's extremely important stuff. So the program started um, maybe some eight-ish years ago, and Tom 
Thomas Hanke from Leipzig, Germany, was the first person inducted into it. Unbelievably skilled crafts, craftsman. I, I don't know that any of you have ever met him. Very, very meticulous, fastidious guy who uh, painstakingly re can rebuild all aspects of the harmonica. Um, so after him, I'm gonna pro I may forget some of the guys. Neil Graham from Australia, from New South Wales, was another one of the people inducted into it. Uh, who has that ability and has that business model to to um, be part of it. Um, and then uh, Mr. Joe Spires. Uh, from Missouri, uh, was, an, was another one of the people in it. Uh, as of a year or two ago, Andrew Zajac, who unfortunately tried to come here and uh, the flight situation prohibited him from actually getting here, but he was trying hard to get here. Um, and then uh, Joel Anderson, who was Swedish, is part of it. And then most recently, uh, Richard Slay which Richard is a mind-bogglingly skilled craftsman and player. Richard just had to take a detour. He was kind of, you know, doing the dance with some other manufacturers and, and, and realized that the real party was so, and you guys head on straight. So, so that's all good. Um, so custom harmonicas. I, I suppose everybody has their own definition of what that is. To me personally, uh, that is rebuilding a harmonica. Let's just say the standard 1896 Marine Band, so that when you feel it, it feels a lot more user friendly in your hand. It feels a lot more user friendly when it's in your mouth. The tuning on it is very consistent. The response on the harmonica is very even uh, through the whole scale of the harmonica. Uh, response is really one of the, bi the big things. The, the people that are doing this, in my opinion, correctly at a high level know how to rebuild the reed plates so that the reeds are vibrating optimally in their individual reed slots. Another way of putting it is, you get the maximum amount of sound out of the harmonica for the least amount of wind, least amount of air pressure. That is what the full customization is according to the guidelines of the affiliated customizer program. There's another sub-level that is referred to as semi-custom work and that is uh, predominantly uh, more feel oriented stuff and look oriented stuff. So uh, somebody that does things reshaping the cover plates or does fancy things polishing uh, and rounding off the edges of the comb um, or replacing the comb with a different material, maybe custom made material, um, that is what we're referring to as semi-custom work. Uh, minimum amount or no amount of work is done to the reeds and the function of the reeds. Try to think of the reeds as sort of equivalent to be the motor of a car, okay? So uh, that is really what makes the machine move. Um, but it doesn't mean that you can't have a cool car by putting on mag wheels and a spoiler on the back and paint some flames on the, on the side. Some people are really into that. Um, Richard, how am I doing? Is there anything that I should mention at this point? I've kind of rambled on for... Well, maybe you would uh, tell the audience um, how uh, candidates uh, can contact the customizer. Um, yeah, and what especially I think it's very important to know for the audience what the benefits are from getting custom parts from you. Okay. Um, currently, 
the main point guy <clears throat> over the whole program more than anybody else would be Richard Weiss back there, the product manager of Honer in Trossing. And, um, if folks are interested, they should uh, talk to him or talk to me. Uh, having communicating with Steve Baker would probably be a good idea too. Um, certainly it's important that you have the ability to do the work or whoever the can potential candidate is must have the ability, the skill to do the work and no um, I personally don't give lessons on how to develop that skill. Uh, it's possible that you might seek some kind of internship with Richard. I, I think at points he has been amiable for some stuff like that, but you'd have to speak to him personally about that. The other thing which is extremely important is that you have to have an established business. So we're really trying to make a distinction between somebody that does this maybe at a very high level but does it as a hobby versus somebody that's actually doing it trying hard to uh, make generate income make a living off of doing it uh, my current state is that I'm generating income in multiple ways uh, I, I do lots of teaching how to play the harmonica and I'm also a professional musician so I have a lot of income coming in from those ways in addition to still doing work for professional players as I have had for nearly 30 years. Um, so see us about that if you have some questions and such. Um, what else? Well, um What's very important to know for you is that there cannot be any political reasons for accrediting anyone as a home affiliate customizer. If there's a candidate, um, the work has to be judged by Joe. Joe is uh, the, the head of the certification process, so um, the custom work has to be judged by him and not by owner. So if there's any customizer where we say, hey, we want to have this guy because it's, he has a good image and, and, and a reputation, whatever. If his work is not good enough to get the okay, okay from, from Joe, this person cannot be a own affiliate customizer. So uh, this is the thing we've uh, introduced um, or we set up to ensure that only the best of the best with the home affiliated customizers. Um, <clears throat> gentlemen, would you like to say anything? Did I miss anything? Is there anything you'd like to add? Um, I, I'd like for you at least to stand up and take a bow, please, <clears throat> kindly. This is uh, Joe Spires, and, and the latest person part of this is Richard Slay. I think you all know them. And, uh, you know, really bluntly, um, you know, I'm fussy about who I want to call my colleagues. So if uh, the, these guys are not bozos. <laughs> and you can, if you want, you can have a harmonica that plays, responds, is better than anything ever that someone like D. Ford Bailey played or Sonny Terry played or Little Walter played. Um, the work that these guys do is, it's astonishing how well harmonicas can play nowadays. It's really astonishing. I could add a couple things. Please do. Sure. Um, Another uh, aspect of this program is that everybody that is in this program is coming from a different background and they bring something else to the, uh, to the process. You know, I, was a, I was an art student. I worked with uh, zinc and copper plate etchings and I used those tools to work with the metal 
And uh, so there were things that I learned from that that, that helped with the process of, of, uh, of customizing harmonicas. Uh, Joe, as he said, is a machinist. You know, uh, Joe and Joe, yeah, and, and, and Joe Spires is, is, is a mechanic, and he comes from that background. Joel Anderson also does, has a machine shop. So everybody in this program is bringing something into it, and also through their background, they're contributing to the, 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 the it's a back and forth with, uh, with, with Joe Felisco and the Honer Company, so it's also uh, bringing, uh, bring, elevating the, the level of, of understanding of the instrument from a lot of different perspectives. And I think that's, that's worth uh, mentioning as, as part of this program. Uh, yes, I, very good. I, I think I'd like to add on to that that <clears throat> I don't currently, I don't really feel like we're competing with each other. He's got his thing that he's doing with his customers and his approach doing it. Richard has his thing and I have my thing and um, I'm happy to, I'm really happy to have this relationship and feel like we are of the same mindset that we are really trying to make the best playing harmonicas available to folks that wish to have them. That is definitely one of the consistencies between here, what we're doing, trying to do. Yeah, I would add that. Honer's made it possible with, through this program for me personally to, to do it as a business. I mean, this is what I do 100% to make a living. And being part of this program has allowed that to happen and continue. I think it was 2012. So six years I've been making money full-time and surviving I don't know that I would have been able to survive without the program but flip side of that is that's not why I'm doing it I would still be using honers if there was no program because they really are in my opinion the best Instruments, but there's something magical about the marine band, that, and that's why it's king of the hill. Yeah, how, how would one be, um, go about becoming part of this? Uh, getting, getting certified and getting uh, information. Uh, a good starting point would be to establish that you have a current reputation and a current customer base of folks that. Are happy so uh, so if I can look online and see you have a web page and that you've been doing business and people are raving about your work that would be the starting point so yeah I guess we're just Also, I think this is very important. <clears throat> this is the most public that Honer has ever gone with this event, which is a really, really big deal from my perspective. Um, I'm, I'm just really pleased that it's being pushed more front and center. I would encourage you also, if you have got questions about the program, pick up the new Honer Easy Reading uh, little uh, news magazine that's down there in the vendor area in the Honer booth and there's a thing that Steve Baker and I wrote about what the program is and what it isn't that we spent a lot of time working on trying to, uh, trying to identify it. Please read that also. So, uh, sir. So, 
So are you, are you three the only ones in the United States? Um, I believe that's true. Yes, we are the only three in the United States. Not North America, but the United States. And when you got into the relationship with Honor, you, did you agree you would only work on Honors? Correct. Right. No, no other, no other, so yes. then Correct. You, barely, you really got to make, that's a big decision. It is. <laughs> uh, actually, in my opinion, it's not a big it's decision, <laughs> no. Because, is what I said right from the beginning, Everybody really wants a marine band harmonica that plays really good. I've, I've been playing the, you know, I've been playing the marine band since the '60s. Maybe you've never, maybe you've never played one that really plays well. Yeah, Phil. Um, I have a friend who's a very talented customizer. Made his living at it for a while, and he moved to chromatic, and was always working on his chromatic. And I, I see you guys, and the diatonic's kind of like the throwaway instrument, or had that reputation for years and years and years, whereas the chromatic still is a much more expensive instrument, but I don't see any analogous people doing chromatic work like you guys are. Do they exist, or do you guys talk to chromatic people? The Swedish uh, young man has put a lot more energy into working on chromatics. Um, I, I have no real explanation as to, you know, why and or when. It's just, you know, there's there's not a long, clear long-term vision on what's happening here. It's really part of it is happening uh, in real time, mm -hmm. and hopefully there will be someone that works on the chromatic. I don't. Yeah, definitely, he, he already started his business um, with chromatic harmonicas. Um, Thomas Hanke is uh, working with chromatic harmonicas, but especially you will understand from Sweden um, is focusing more and more on the chromatic harmonicas. Okay. So are you starting? <coughs> Why are you starting something like this, but for chromatics? Oh, it's the same. He's an okay. owner. Okay. Okay. He can customize it, but then and okay. he uh, his custom you can get um, custom hops uh, from him, which are diatonic and chromatic. And he repairs chromatics. Both. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. You said you had different things. So you have different emphases, or what, what, what's the distinction that you're making? I, I would really just encourage you to talk to them individually and see. I, I, don't, I don't think it's really like the best use of time for us to go into details about what we do. My thing really is more geared towards keeping the professional players that I've known and done work for for years happy and I, I don't know a lot of the details about you know w what these gentlemen are trying to do that's special or different really kind of a follow-up or a similar question what you guys do there's a lot of science involved and I know you put a lot of thought into it and what needs to be done and why but it's also I would think really an art and can you pick up a harmonica and say Oh yeah, this is a Richard Slade, this is a Joe Spires, this is a Felisco, this is an Andrew Say Jack. Can you tell differences between your own harps? Um, ideally, no, uh, because he knows what he's doing, he knows what he's doing. Mm -hmm. It's one of those things that, that if you, my feeling on the matter is mm -hmm. if you were to pick up one of each, yeah. You would you would have the same identical eyebrow raising, jaw dropping experience okay. of playing the thing. In that aspect, I would agree, but tonally, I, I can hear a difference in Richards or Joe's or a Jimmy Gordon harp or mine. Okay. When we're working on the reeds, I think we all have our own idea of what it's supposed to sound like, and it's not that it's. Mm -hmm. Night and day difference. I, I know I tell It's really, really subtle. So, okay. yes and no. Okay. As a realist, I know that I will never be at the level of work that you all do. Uh, and I, I don't think I could get there if I worked at it for years and years and years full time. What resources are there for? better 
Um, well, if you go, uh, so Honer sells toolkits. They also have things posted online uh, about, and they've also published a lot of information on working on reads. There, there are things archived at the Honer site. You know, I have problems with Honor site uh, similar to the 80s and 90s harmonicas. A little bit of touch and go. Uh, well, uh, anyhow, uh, you know, there is information available through Honor. Okay. Um, I also have published, uh, you know, instructional materials. I've also designed tools, and, and I also work, you know, I've, I, I've worked with people to instruct them on, on how to work on, you know, harmonicas and you know so that's something I've I, I've done as part of my own uh, thing you know I, I also teach music you know teach how to play the instrument and also how to work on it um, I, I believe in the last six months there has been a lot of upgrading to the websites right. yeah I, I'm Chris can you confirm that I'm not sure okay um, I I know a couple people that have reported to me changes in the websites. Right. And certainly I can, I feel like your, what's that? It sounds familiar, but if so, it's not anything I'm doing. Okay. Phil. Um, the main thing that's kept me from really trying to do my own stuff and play around is number one, the cost of a harmonica is, you know, Marine Vance are still 40 bucks, and if I screw one up, you know, I screwed up, it, finding donor harps, and finding a source of supply for the reeds. Any, uh, like I, I was lucky enough to get a, a, an estate sale. I've got like 50 or 60 blown out marine bands and you know, that I can play with. But you, you need more than that? No, I don't need more than that. Now I need the reeds. Because these all have like blown out reeds and I want to replace the reeds, but where do I get the reeds? From the first 25. Mm -hmm. From the first 25 old ones. Yeah. You get your reeds. I've had somebody caution me, no, you don't want to take one from one harp and put it in another because then you're just putting a new reed in to get new reads. So. Um, Does Horner make available um, new reads? Oh, yes. yes. You can buy yeah. Okay. But they just take forever to get them. Okay. Especially certain yeah. ones. Like okay. a D4. And you, you can only, and I heard, like, you got to buy an ungodly amount. Of, you can't get like 20 reads. Come in five this types. is a process that yeah. they're, they're yeah. continuously improving. They're working on it. Yeah. But, you know. So that's the beauty of having that phone power. Use those used reads. Yeah. Yeah. Are you guys taking new customers? Yes. Yeah. And that ties in with what he's saying. I mean, you're talking about working on your own harps and learning how to customize, but, you know, that's what we do for a living. I'm not turning away business. I mean, Joe might be, unless. He feels like he wants to take you. I don't think Richard turns too many people away. You need to weigh the, the price of the harp to begin with versus the risk of screwing it up, an expensive harp, and all the time involved, and then price our stuff. And you might be surprised. I mean, some people don't even check into it. They think, well, it's a custom harp, it costs 300 bucks, and He's got a year waiting list. That's not the case at all. Learning to do this work involves destroying a lot of harmonicas. <laughs> and that's how we've learned. We've we all are. learned through, you know, here, here. So <laughs> my point is, you know, seriously. My point is why I can understand if you're just dead broke, but really, why would you want to screw with it when you can get? Some the, of the best players. For the players. same reason you all did. You wanted to learn about it. You wanted to experience it. You wanted to know the instrument from the inside out. Mm -hmm. well, well, the, other, the, other, the other thing is that if you, if you want to learn how to do this, it's also a really good idea to, to buy a couple of, of harmonicas in different ranges from people like us. So you can see, you know, so you can, so you can understand what you're, what you're going for. Give you a reference. Yeah, give you a reference. Yes, sir. Could you uh, talk about buying these expensive harps? Could you buy cheaper harps and practice on those? I mean, I'm talking like the, the blues band, like $12 from Cracker Barrel or stuff like that, or are the components 
lower tier and you can't do anything. In order to, to understand how the metal works on a marine band reed plate, you have to work on the metal on a marine band reed plate. You can learn a few things from these other harmonicas, but the materials and construction is different. So it's like it's like you can't learn how to work on a Mercedes by working on a you know a Yugo or a Ford. <laughs> All I'm trying to do is replace reeds I'm blowing them out. I haven't played a good, you know, uh, customized harmonic, so I don't know what I'm missing. How much would it cost for me to get a, uh, a harmonic? From Richard. Richard, what would you charge me for one of your custom a harmonics? Well, you know, my, my range right now for the for the Marine Band Deluxe it starts at about 159, 160, right around there. Oh, it's not bad. No. With me, my marine band is 155 and the special 20 is 130. And it'll be one of the best. That's the hard band to work? Yeah. The not correct, I'm sorry. Correct me if I'm wrong. You know, I always felt like the marine band was a stiffer harmonic than the special 20. So I went with the special 20. It felt smoother and responsive to me. But this is years ago. This is when the wood still was cutting my mouth, you know? Right. But, so your your Special 20 custom is actually a little cheaper than your Marine Band custom. Is it still a, a, a thicker metal? Is it the Marine Band a little bit? The Marine thicker? Band Special 20s have the same reeds. I mean, literally the I identical, okay. the same part. So the differences you felt in harmonicas over the years can be for a lot of different reasons and marine bands have vents in the side of the cover plates and but it as, changes the sound but as far as stiffness anything we do it, one's not going to be stiffer than the other you know i've been a bit different than, i mean i was i was a classroom teacher and, and i worked with guys that made grass they would start out as customizers. And eventually, they found it so frustrating to deal with the craziness of each individual customer that they, they gave it up and started just, you know, thought they'd buy a computer, play, and just start pumping out stock models, and that was it. How hard, how hard is that part of your life <coughs> to deal with some, you know, I mean, come on. You deal with a lot of crazy goddamn people. I, I don't I care what, I don't care, I, even if you're selling shirts and, and you know, uh, the Gap, you're dealing with a lot of crazy people. Is that, is that a hard part of it? Um, I think that due to the vast amounts of inhaling that a lot of harmonica players do have a certain degree of brain damage. <laughs> um, it does go along with it. But focusing on the, the good news, the good news is now like, the love and the respect that we've been feeling from Honer and having access to parts and reed plates in reeds and things that that really makes the the pain of having to deal with crazy clients a lot easier to deal with and I'm and I'm I've got plenty of stories and I'm sure these gentlemen have got plenty of stories too and if you read uh, the procedure for ordering harmonicas, how you go about doing it, you may find that there's peculiar things. I'm sure all of those pecu peculiar things came about from dealing with customers that were uh, Im unreasonable. Yeah. How hard do you guys find it to match the harmonica to the player? I mean, obviously, a lot of people say they blow out this harp or that harp in a couple of months and other people n never blow them out you know people it's not hard when you know what you're doing and that's one of the things that separate a high level technician from somebody that's still figuring stuff out because when you're doing stuff right it will cover a lot more ground as far as players 
I still need to know. you and try to make their harmonica that can only do a little bit match how you do it, how you play. That would be my answer. Okay. <clears throat> the, you know, from what I've heard, you know, the biggest endorsement this company has is the fact you get so emotional when you're talking about the night. And in fact, you, hunt, you believe in this instrument enough to hang in there through that period that obviously felt you, made you feel so bad. I mean, that's really, a, a lot of people have just moved on to, you know, a different pasture. And so that's probably the biggest endorsement that they can have for you. That's very kind of you, thank you. I, I feel like the, it's pretty, not to be argued that the diatonic harmonica is one of the world's most popular instruments and um, having damn good ones available to play has always been very important to me and yeah I'm kind of overprotective of it in some ways um, yeah it was some crazy stuff that we've been through yeah. thank you thank yeah. you very much thank you Yes, sir. There's some, is there some other kind of honer or uh, approval or certification program? Because uh, I, 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 I've come across some someplace. I think it's that guy down. He had a booth downstairs. It was called Harmonica Gallery, and his name is George something or other. And uh, he he advertises himself as being a owner, an approved owner something. He's a dealer. Or he's, a dealer. He's a, oh, a he's dealer. A dealer. Yeah. So there's dealers and there's affiliates. <coughs> and the difference is he can sell owners and you... There, there's, I think Richard would be the one to answer, but there's official owner repair centers. Right. So um, that's he, different than yeah. the affiliated so, customer. Right, George is an American dealer, and this is a uh, uh, title he received from our American distributor, uh, which was Honor um, Inc. until 2015, which, which was our associate company, but now it is um, KHS. Um, but this has nothing to do with what we do in Germany. Uh, from, right from Germany, there are the two certifications, the Honor Affiliate Customer, and as Joe already mentioned, uh, there are uh, certified Honor Technicians. Um, if you want to become a certified home technician, uh, you have to be uh, in Trossingen at the factory for two and a half days. Uh, you have to work for one day in the manufacturing department uh, and one and a half day in the service department and you receive a, a very strong um, uh, training in uh, building harmonicas uh, and repairing harmonicas. And after those 2.5 days, um, you get the certification as the um, HONA yeah, certified uh, technician. Um, and you, you will uh, receive the abilities to repair uh, the entire range of HONA harmonicas. And of course, you get the spare parts uh, to do this job. These are the two certifications uh, we uh, issue uh, right from HONA in Germany. Uh -huh. But none, none of these people work for Honor. They're just uh, they are no employees. They're they're all you're like independent contractors like these yeah. like these guys. Yeah. Uh, it is confusing. What what can these guys do that a technician can't do? Well, <laughs> one is repairing harmonicas. The, the other thing is customization. Oh. It's like um, you bring your a car to a workshop because you have I don't know flat tire, uh -huh. or if you bring your car to a, a company uh, that tunes it. So that you have more horse, horsepower and you can drive oh, we see. Okay. faster, uh, faster. So these are the differences between service and customization. <laughs> <laughs> what's the cost of this? What, what's the cost of attending that, that? Sorry. What's the cost of attending that? The factory. Sorry. Cost. How much money to go to trust again? Well, you have I, I, to. I know providing your own transportation and all that. Yeah. But is there a cost for in-house training? Yeah, uh, right now we uh, offer this for a process we want to uh, associate with um, our distributors. So whenever there are customer um, um, requests for uh, maintaining harmonicas, they can send harmonicas to those technicians. And in the past we shared the cost, so um, our distributor was in charge of traveling costs and we uh, paid all 
uh, across the yeah, uh, curtain yeah. crossing, which means accommodation, uh, food, beverages, and the entire training. But we, in the past, we just uh, did this uh, certification for people uh, we uh, used in those countries, um, which don't have a service department. So that you can, uh, they can handle all official service requests for Hona harmonicas. If you want to uh, do this uh, by your own, so you just want to uh, learn how to repair the harmonica, this is something completely different. We, we haven't offered it uh, till now. Um, we get more and more requests and we have to figure out how we handle this. Uh, because, uh, for instance, here in the US, uh, we have a service department. Um, in our, uh, our, at the uh, KHS, our distributor, we have uh, very qualified service technicians. One is uh, Tim Schofield uh, that we have the harmonicas uh, down at the Honor booth. Um, so uh, we won't uh, establish uh, further the service technicians in the US because we have a service department here. Um, if we, uh, if we just cover the costs for those who come from countries where we don't have a service department in order to create um, the contact persons for our customers that, that they can get help if, if uh, they have an issue with the harmonica. Um, for private persons that want to learn how to maintain harmonicas, uh, we haven't uh, a system yet. But uh, I know that we have to develop that because there are more and more uh, questions of customers that want to learn I have to run. I have a sound check I have to do if you want. If, if you have other questions for me personally, I should be around this evening. Um, I'm always, I'm, that's what I'm here for. Um, I want to really thank Honer for kind of giving us a promotion in terms of recognition here, what we're doing. Um, it's a fantastic honor, which doesn't come around very much. Very grateful. Thanks for, to Chris for being here. Thanks to Richard and Drew, who's downstairs in the booth. Thank you very much. Um, if you want to have and own some of the best playing harmonicas that are anywhere on the planet, you should talk to these two gentlemen. They are ridiculously skilled craftsmen that are committed to the art. Um, and uh, with that being said, congratulations to Richard being a new part of the, the family of the affiliated customizers. And that's it. I have to run. Thank you for being here. I asked if you got questions for these guys, if they want to stick around, then please ask away. Um, I do have one question okay. uh, because it kind of relates to talking about repairs okay. and all that. I've heard people say a custom harmonica lasts longer, is, but I don't think I've heard any of you guys actually say that. Do they last longer? Depends on the player. Yeah, it, okay. there, there's, there, there's so much of the ver so many of the variables are with the player. Yeah. Uh, so be, a, a custom harmonica is more efficient mm -hmm. and it has more compression. Yeah. So if you're if you're a really hard player, that that increase in in air tightness and compression actually delivers even more force to the reed. So potentially. Yeah. Uh, you know, somebody who's a real heavy hitter gets a custom harmonica, they could actually break a reed easier than a stock harp. And what about tuning tuning and harmonicas going out of tune? Part of what you do is make you a harmonica that plays well but sounds well. I mean, you could make one that bends like butter and everything, but it's out of tune. Um, when it's in tune, how often do the reeds go out of tune on you? Do you get many well, requests well, saying, hey? Once again, we're, we're talking about variables that are out of our control. For example, okay. if you have um, saliva that has a, uh, a, a, a that is very acidic mm -hmm. and it comes in contact with the brass, it's going to react differently and over time could, could change the pitch of the reed. Okay. Compared to somebody who's, who's, whose saliva and breath is alkaline, so you know, uh, if the tuning when 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 we when it leaves 
us, the tuning is, is very balanced and, uh, you know, and how long it stays that way is a function of how hard you play the harmonica and, you know, what kind of chemical reactions might be going on. Okay.